Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about Bubba and Sticks. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I read into him my last trip through Kentucky. Now you know, I was thinking about the name Bubba and Sticks. When you first hear that, what do you think of? Just, you know, snap. What's your brain go to? Bubba and Sticks. I think of Rednecks. That's Rednecks. pretty much what I think of. I know you're probably going to say something like Forrest Gump, aren't you? Well, I was thinking about the, the bubble gum. Like well, Bubba, Double Bubba, something like that. It's funny you should mention that. You know why that's funny? No. We'll get into it later. Oh, okay. Um, well, Aaron, it's been a busy week over at everythingamiga.com. Yeah, we're busy getting it fixed. <laughs> if you uh, were part of the site outage, uh, we apologize for that. That was a, a widespread issue with a Cloudflare, and uh, it's... Woo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, that is a logo just waiting to happen. With Cloudflare with with the Nate. I like in it. There. Call that guy up. Yeah. He kicked out of death twice. He's two and zero oh against death. Wow. Yeah. When was the latest time that he kicked out? Of just death? recently. Really? He was dead and he kicked out. He it's kicked two, out. Two point nine. He kicked out. Wow. He can't be killed. <laughs> That's true. I mean, he's got to he be, be almost. Sued. He's got to be almost fifty years old now. Oh, fifty. He's way older than that, but he's mm. like seventy something. Are you serious? Yeah, it's he's like old. older than Paul McCartney. He's in at, le- at bare minimum. He's in his late sixties. He's old. He's an old man. Yeah, and in wrestling years, that's like one hundred and fifty thousand. So mm. he can't be killed. Let's talk about what's been going on over at everythingamiga.com, Aaron. Okay. All right. So <laughs> this first article, Dreamcatcher. He's been on it. He uh, he talked to a former ocean artist, John Lomax. Uh, about the Dennis the Menace uh, movie tie-in game. Yeah, he covered this one. Uh, gosh, it's been a, it's been a while back since he originally covered mm-hmm. it, but he's got he came back with fresh info. Yeah, yeah. So it's always cool to see Dreamcatcher interviewing the uh, the original uh, artists and people that, that worked on this game. Now, as I recall, you never actually saw the uh, 1992 or 1993 rendition of Dennis the Menace. Hell no. All of your Dennis the Menace starred Jane Worth. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Jane North, troubled, troubled child. He wasn't troubled. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, he's just like Patty Duke. Maybe no, he's even not. More so. He's a wholesome young man. Mm. Now he's not. Now he's dead. You know, he's not dead. Well, he's like over fifty. That doesn't mean you're dead. I'll remember that in two years, and I come in here beat the crap out of you. Three years. I'm now, going. Aaron, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about this article. War was more fun in my day. I've got no idea what this is. <laughs> well, <laughs> it looks like the classic comics that we didn't get here in the states. Yeah. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I guess this is a game called Stum Truppin, and uh, maybe it is a uh, a rendition of one of those classic Belgian comics that were all the rage in Europe back in the '80s and early '90s that we have no idea about. Remember that song? Come on, let's go, Storm Truppin. Well, I was thinking more about the uh, the classic Chumbawamba hit, Strum Chum Thumpin. Man, they've got some crazy comics over there, don't they? They do. Was that a naked soldier and a guy who dressed them down? It's what happens when they combine superhero comics with humor comics. Naked soldiers. That's not good. I'm glad I didn't get that. Yeah, yeah. They, they were censored here in the United States, of course, by not, not being released. <laughs> yeah. Good move. Thank you, Uncle Sam. You've done it again. <laughs> and finally, we have... Uh, this is an article about the game Paradise Lost, which is clearly an ode to the John Milton epic poem. Uh, of the same name with some Wonder Woman. Oh man, uh, let's talk about Linda Carter for a minute. What do you think about Linda Carter back in the '80s? I feel like she's kind of like a Debbie Harrison, you know, from Blondie. Debbie Harry. Well, and no, she's nothing like her. What? She was she's like a brunette. She, dude. W- but she was already old when she was Linda Carter, and now she's just gone beyond all. Dude, are you talking about the same woman I'm talking about? Yeah. She still looks great. Mm. Linda Carter, clearly, you're an idiot. This chick's hot. Okay. She, and back in the old days, that song kick up. She start running toward the camera. Mm-hmm. Man, woof, 
Ooh, good God, y'all. Maybe that was, that was joyous. Maybe, joyous, my friend. Was this... Show you, was horrible. I was going to say, do you think that uh, Wonder Woman was the greatest superhero show of the 80s? I know that was a low bar to cross. It was great for me, because mm-hmm. it started a hot Linda Carter in a skimpy outfit. She bounced all over the screen. Right, right. I loved it. Mm. Did, you ever play the, it. did you ever play the Amiga version of Wonder Woman? I never have, no. Ah. I, in fact, I didn't know of its existence, to yeah. be completely honest with you. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's something we can take a look at in the future. You know, really, if you go back and watch that show, as mm-hmm. hot and sexy as Linda Carter was, that show was written by the world's worst hideous hacks. I mean, it's it's, it's the dirt worst show. Oh, how, how would you the com- dirt worst? How would you compare it to the Incredible Hulk with uh, Lou Ferrigno? That Hulk was a much deeper and more philosophical show. Mm. The other show was like, can, uh, can we put Linda Carter in a let's put her in a skin tight diving suit this week? Bam, that's a show. Now, what about Wonder Woman versus something uh, equivalent like Charlie's Angels? Charlie's Angels was a more thoughtful show. Mm. It really so was. you're really scraping the bottle of the barrel. But I mean, it didn't have Linda Carter. Listen, you got Farrah Fawcett, Kate Jackson. Suzanne right? Summers. No, that was Three's Company. Mm. You're way off here, but you're out of your element here. I am. But yeah, I endorse this one. Just watch it with the butte on. <laughs> so you don't need to talk. Now, unfortunately, Aaron, there is no Amiga News this week. What? Absolutely nothing happened. In you didn't the look at any. You didn't do it. I did. Did the site was a news site down? Or I something? did. I did my due diligence. I looked all over. The closest thing that uh, that I found was the announcement of the C sixty four Maxi unit the with, Maxi. with the keyboard. I don't. Sure, they're not calling it that, are they? <laughs> oh God, um, that's horrible. Did you did you run across any Amiga news this week? No. Okay. For, the, for, the, for a good while, I didn't realize I was going to need be required to get Amiga news. I trust me, man. <laughs> I run. I, I scour the depths of the internet. The only thing I could find was some game that's coming out soon that's based on one of these new engines. It didn't look great. So I, I you know, you know our policy. We don't report on you're games poop, under development. You're poo pooing a lot of these new. Uh, Games that are coming out. And I think Dude, so, I went to that same site. There's nothing there. I think so. And I want to talk about this. Uh, uh, remember this one you you were killing it a couple weeks ago. That uh, the, the new shooter game that's out. Oh man, that uh, thing's garbage. Uh, what help reshoot R yeah, or whatever? It's Listen, the worst. I looked at some video of this. It looks pretty good to me. Mm. I think you were. I think you were too hasty. And I'd like to beseech the uh, Amigos Game Selection Committee to add this to the rotation. So we can give this a formal look. Okay. Well, maybe I might change my tune once I look upon it for the first That's time. That's right. You need to you need to lighten up. These guys are working hard, and they're releasing these games for the Amiga that are brand new. So we need to give them some love. Now, uh, even though there is no new Amiga news this week, I thought that we might have some time to talk about this week's big retro computing pickup of another sort. Okay. Aaron, you've come across a, quite the treasure trove of another classic computing system as of late that we have not talked about on this <laughs> We've show. We've talked about this two times. We've this never the talked about it. third time you've brought it up. We've never yes. talked about it. For those of you that were here that missed the last three shows, I got a bunch of Coco stuff, TR City Car Computer 3. I think it was because I wasn't here. Now it's all coming back to me. I wasn't here on the initial week that, that, was, that you talked about it. And so I keep I keep push, I keep keep putting it in the back of my mind. Like, remember to talk about the Coco stuff. You're nuts. Stuff. It's thoroughly talked about. Now, we had a ton of videos this week. That's, now, that's news. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so let's talk about this week's update for Amigathon 2019. Yeah. So far, we've raised $521 in support of the cause, the cause being Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. There is still time and space left on the schedule. We still have a couple open slots uh, in the morning and in the uh, early afternoon. So uh, if you want to get in there, there's about six spots left. All it takes is a $25 donation to guarantee us playing 20 minutes of your favorite Amiga game. Game. That's my nickname right there, that game. Which one? Mr. Nuts. You, it, they call that, me. That is what yeah. they call you. I've heard that before. So, that's uh, pretty good, though. 521 already. Absolutely. Eh? I want to thank everybody that's donated already. And uh, if you make a donation of at least $30, you get a Amigathon magnet only produced for people that donate to Ooh, Amigathon. Fancy. Yeah. You know, if we raise $2,000, we could just we could just call off the, uh, the <laughs> call off the Amigathon <laughs> and we'll... They just go get in the pool, all right? They won't be mad about that, will they? That will be hour 13 when we descend to the hot tub. Oh, and man. <laughs> it's a megathon after dark. Is that sort of like getting the pie? But <laughs> Let's not lose this. I have to get in the hot tub with Bo. Oh, yeah, there's, there will be. I figured after, you know, the first year you got the pie. The second year I got the pie. No, no. This year, no. Oh, we're on, just not stop, doing the stop, pie. Stop, stop right there. The first year I got the pie that was violently made part of my face by your powerful buddy. It was a proper pie. Last year, you had one 
styrofoam plate with some whipped cream in it that you got a little on your nose, and then we ended the show. So don't act like you took one for the team. Oh, I got a pie. You didn't get jack squat. What are you saying you that my pie. pie was different than yours? And there's no video of this, but let me tell you something. This Even I felt bad for Bud, because he was so grumpy and wretched that he, I couldn't even have the heart to barely touch him with this styrofoam plate full of whipped cream. Well, it actually, weak. it had liquefied, because I'd made it three or four hours before. This was a weak and effort. So as far as I'm concerned, you, st you still owe me a pie. Mm. That was not a pie. And plus, it wasn't shoved into your face by the Incredible Hulk. That's so true. I was trying to see the ice come out the back of my head. That hurt. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget that. I'm still picking pie to my ear. It was the greatest Two moment Two years of my ago. Life. Well, Aaron. Videos. Let's talk about this week's site news on everythingamiga.com. Look, there's me. <laughs> we had a lot of videos this week, Boat. I mean, tons and tons. So, um, what what do you think, if you were going to narrow it down to the greatest video of this week, what would you say it would be? Uh, I'd say it was your uh, attempt at playing this week's game. That was where I derived the most pleasure. You know, because um, <laughs> you were you were struggling mightily, and it made me feel better about my own efforts. We played. Oh boy, what? this is this is all gone wrong now. You're seeing you're seeing behind the curtain here. I don't even know what this stuff is. <laughs> So uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, there, there's we we've done a couple different uh, videos here. We did uh, a ton of stuff. Keep going back. There's more. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, where's the where's the Bubba and Six video? Did I not make that live? Go back. There it is. You skipped it twice. There you go. No, that's that's us right now. Oh, okay. Well, it was here. I saw it. Okay. Well. I recorded a video of me streaming Bubba and Sticks. It was pretty rad. Uh, yeah. I probably have not made it public yet for reasons that are unknown to me. I know why. Um, because if you were to watch one guy in a vain attempt to figure these games out, you were stuck at that same level I was for like an hour. Yeah. And then eventually when you died, you're like, screw this. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I had the chat on my side. We were trying to work it out, but we couldn't. Now, <laughs> long, long ago, Aaron, way back in 2016, that's a handsome, handsome. Look at your hair, Boat. Oh, man. My, What's going on right there? My hair was long and luxurious. You had a, uh, what do you call it? It's that? a reverse mohawk. It does. That's, what, the, it that's is. what we call that. That's exactly. What's with the little curly cue there? That, well, that's a little. Hair by Dairy Queen. It's a little you know something bad on there. So we played a role playing game called Haunter of the Moor. That was the, that was the name of the adventure. The game's called Chill. This is a complete playthrough of Haunter of the Moor. <laughs> um, so uh, we got together with our buddies Chad and Larry. Um, and uh, we will see them right here. And uh, we did a, a, a complete run through of, of this campaign. Uh, Aaron was a fantastic DM. And uh, this is sort of a pilot that we did where, uh, you know, maybe in the future we'll get together again with some buds and, uh, and run through another adventure. Larry's doing some weird stuff with his hands there. You can see a lot more of that over the course of three hours. Hey, remember our crazy light set up back then? Yeah, for some reason I thought it was good to have a whole bunch of lights on in the studio. Now we just have one light, and it's the light that came with the studio and the ceiling. It gives a more dank look. Yeah. I like it. That, you know, that our pilot. It shows what two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. One of these days, maybe episode two will come out. Maybe one day, maybe one day. So, um, Aaron, if you were going to do uh, another role playing adventure, what is what is one that you just are itching to get out again? Well, I would be remiss if we did not get back and do some actual factual Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. so we'll probably have to play one of the classic Gary Gygax pinned modules, uh, possibly one of my favorites, like. Uh, Oh, Expedition of the Barrier Peaks or White Plume Mountain. One of those. I don't think I don't know if he actually wrote that one, but it's a great one. So yeah, well, some there's some I run for everyone over and over. I'm, I'm very intimate with them, so those would be two good choices. Now, Aaron, why don't you talk about this one a little bit? This is the Commodore Amiga CD32 keyboard I think it's from, from the, the Huck, Amiga 100. Yeah, this is now from the, the Huck. Huck. The Huck came across something here with the CD32. You've got your. Uh, it's still got the the uh, wrap on the little windows. Mm -hmm. Lucky the the Huck has a way of finding this stuff. He's it's got a way of it. finding mint condition items that are as rare as hen's teeth here in the states. So I'll, I'm going to give you. I don't know exactly. I watched this video and what Huck got here is uh you know of course the uh, cd32 is a console right mm -hmm. Bode? well a l little known fact it's not little known it's widely known <laughs> that you could actually hook a, a a keyboard in this thing if you have i believe it's an amiga 4000 keyboard mm -hmm. all right uh and so well i've got six ten of those sitting around no i don't got none nobody's got one like they're pretty rare so what the Huck's got here, he's got an Amiga 1000 keyboard, also not exactly it's something you find every day. That's true. And someone's done a gimmick on it to uh, hook this thing up it, to the to the uh, to the. It's kind of reminiscent of the, the gimmick that I did on the power supply for the Spectrum. Remember that feat of engineering? 
Yeah, this is better. Oh. This is better. You notice that the C the C thirteen works. <laughs> see that's that there is where the uh there's where the I see the difference is. now. Thank you, you know, for pointing it out. It's funny watching the huck I love the huck, as you know. And watching the huck uh with the old Amiga one thousand keyboard, I love that I love the Amiga one thousand. I love having that separate keyboard. I know the Amigas are a nice compact unit. You know, I love not that. the good ones. The but good ones have the separate keyboard. They're, they're all good. But that 1000 is a is a, a fun and quirky little unit. It's got the little garage for Here's it. Here's the there. thing. In 81, having an all-in-one unit made sense. Witness the Atari 1200 XL. Yeah. By the time you get to 85, 86, Amiga did it right the first time with the 1000. Well, Detachable keyboard, keyboard garage. You've got to remember something, Boatster. The uh, Amiga 500 was a budget release. True. They wanted you to get the 2000 and then the 3000 and the 4000 I had the keyboards you know the separate keyboards right right so you that's why you're getting the all in one unit uh, with the 1200 what was their excuse the 1200 was a budget release the 4000 effectively mm, you know mm. and it was that's one not to mention that the writing was on the wall we could make a crap load of money with this because the 500 had been a huge success and of course, a 600 less said the better. Although now the 600 has a new life. I love the 600. I do it's too, my favorite but, Amiga. But I'm, I'm telling you, when it came out, I remember reading it in magazines with specs, and I was just like, "You're all idiots for real. what are you doing?" Mm -hmm. You know. And I think everyone pretty much said those exact words. I was appalled when they released that that unit. And that people got to remember that when the Amigas were coming out, it's not like it's not like now where it's like HP has released the uh, XX34, the SS36. This one's got the SS80, like 20 different variations. Like these things came out like it take like a year or two for another variation to come out. So you're waiting, you're forever to get something. It was a letdown, big time. All right, let's talk about uh, I release. You know, every summer, Aaron, uh, because I'm a teacher, I have the summer off, so I have a little bit of extra time on my hands. And I've released another uh, classic uh, Amigos episode remastered with better graphics and sound. Tightened up the levels on level seven. Uh, this is uh, episode 26, Stunt Car Racer. You know, you know what I remember about this the most of all? What's that? First of all, I love this game, as you know. This is the game. Like, it, was it ever done any better? I don't know, and I don't want to know. This is, this is the king. And so... When we reviewed this, I remember you were real lukewarm about what we did mm -hmm. when we took a look at it. Right. You were real lukewarm about it. I was like, man, is Boat on the crack? What's wrong with this guy? Well, then I found out later during the, during the Amigos, uh, well, back to the back when we did the Amigos play of every game like, together, uh, that you were running, your version was all jacked up. Yeah. It looked, like, it looked like double secret garbage. Yeah, I was running off the ADF on uh, on Vanilla One UAE. It was and no I, good. And I remember when I showed you the proper version, you're like, oh, crap, this looks a lot better. That's mm -hmm. what it's supposed to look like. But, oh, my God. So, yeah, this is a great game. It, this episode was so long ago that that's pretty much all I remember about it. But yeah. it's. I'm sure I did my usual... Uh, ranting and raving about it's awesome. This well, time. stay tuned because over the course of the summer I plan to uh, continue to remaster these classic episodes all the way up to episode 50 or 49, which You've was our first a video already, show. Yeah. 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 So, uh, good for you, eh? Yeah, and you can tell a difference too, big time. All right, yeah. and finally, Aaron, the last thing we should talk about is this week's ARG Presents. Uh, well, can you sing it? ARG Presents. No, I mean, you remember your old song? <laughs> oh, uh, Aaron and John making a new podcast. ARG presents. Man, you should bring that back. ARG. I actually, That's, I used it in my credits one time. Uh, I had to. This week, me and the Brent, the notorious the Brent, we took a look at the uh, Mattel uh, Aquarius boat. It's the dawning. This was the dawning of the age of Aquarius. The age was one episode. <laughs> <laughs> which it lasted, it was slightly shorter than the lifespan of the Age of Aquarius, which was short. This, um, uh, first of all, if you look at the Aquarius, just look at that. What's it look like to you? It looks like a toy. It does. Mattel made a toy computer, mm -hmm. except it actually kind of worked. Um, this thing was a 4K of unadulterated power. It, it was not good. <laughs> but out of the muck, the mire, rose a gem. A gem was found. I can't believe I'm going to say it, but the Brent did good this week, and picked and plucked the winner. So if you're uh, if they, if you're enticed, if you're interested, I strongly recommend you're you not going to talk about your game for this week. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to give it all away, but mm, okay, okay. leaving wanting something. And I will say, um, uh, our upcoming week, 
should be interesting as well. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But yeah, we had we had a good time. Cool. Well, uh, actually, I was wrong. The uh, we do have one more episode that was released since the last episode, and that is our new uh, Everything Amiga. Or I'm sorry, that's this show. You dumb. Our, <laughs> our new episode of Iris Sinclair. Uh, was released today, actually recorded last week. This is where we talk about RoboCop. Uh, so if you are into uh, licensed properties and uh, slightly lower than average fun levels on the ZX Spectrum, hey, check I, out this episode of, uh, of Iris and Claire. I will say I saw a comment from the uh, the uh, well-known, popular Dean Swain. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is, is that Swainy? Swainy, that's mm-hmm. right, from uh, uh, Retro Asylum. He was fired from that show, wasn't he? No, what? What? He's the guy that he's one of the co-founders. Oh. Are you nuts? Anyway, uh, uh, he mentioned that uh, the, uh, the key to this game is level memorization. Now, any game where the key is level memorization, I am out. That well, I was gonna say that mm-hmm. my problem is my level of level memorization is quite low, <laughs> and so uh, it's not my. You know, I, if I play this enough, I mean, the thing is, uh, having played this in the arcade, I mean, this is it's not bad. No, it's I not enjoyed bad. it. It. I'm, I'm not going to kill it like you just did, but it, I thought it was interesting. I like the 3D parts, too. You know, they're kind of dopey. So, yeah, I like that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so there's been a ton going on this week with uh, with our channel. Everything Amiga is not the name of our channel. Amiga's Retro Gaming is. And we're, um, we're slowly leaking out the last year's Amigathon footage. Uh, what we should. Uh, my plan is to get all the episodes out by middle of July. So the last episode we've got. To, it might. It would be great if you could get that last episode out the day before the Amigathon day, that's, 2019. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Because that, that's the real enticement. Where, we're, <laughs> where that'll really get people to come watch the show. We're all <laughs> At our down. lowest point, boats like got me like this. <laughs> Die! All right, Aaron. Let's talk a little bit about Bubba and his buddy Sticks. You know. We had a, a speaking of the Amigathon, we did have a, a cup of coffee with this during the Amigathon. First you know what? Let's talk about Amigathon real quick one more time because I want to just uh, point out that Josh Nan has pledged an amount for the Amigo Aaron Weight Loss Challenge and if or the Amiga Aaron Weight Loss Wager. If you have pledged uh, some amount of money, all shall be revealed at 12 noon at the Amigathon. Aaron, you want to give anybody a uh, quick rundown of your progress in the Amigo and Weight Loss Wager? It's been a slog, folks. Uh, it has not uh, been uh, the best. It's not been the worst. I'm in there fighting. I will be cutting weight for the event. Mm-hmm. Uh, maximum weight. I'll be uh, I'll be putting on a full latex head-to-toe sweatsuit. Mm. I will be... That's what a, Tyson did. I'll be in a sauna mm-hmm. on a treadmill juggling Chainsaws. Wow. For the week or two uh, leading up to the show. We need to get a webcam in there. Well, there's no web because the moisture would destroy it instantly. Mm. But uh, there will be there will be a reckoning, boat. If and you, the reckoning is, if I don't lose enough weight, i got to pay the big money. And it is not too late to get in on the Amigo Aaron weight loss wager. If you go to everythingamiga.com and click on the link right there on the right side of the page, you can pledge for every dollar, uh, for every pound Aaron loses, you can choose a certain amount to give, and all of the money goes right to Children's Miracle Networks in support of all those uh, fine works that they do over there. All right, sorry, I just wanted to fit that in before we got into Bubba and Sticks. Let's do it, Aaron. Bam. Or bam, bam. I've switched the scene. That's Very good. Yeah. Now, as I was saying, uh, 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 mm-hmm. uh, we had a cup of coffee with this at the Amigathon. Uh, I can't remember if it was last year, two years ago, Boatster. Do you remember? I believe ahead. that this was two years ago. I think you're right. And uh, the uh, premise of this, before we get into it fully, is that is uh, you play a, a hick, a barefoot, overall wearing doofus hick. There are not many hicks in video games. Th- there's a reason for that because they're as, all in West Virginia. As West Virginia has proven. Now, this, this let me add, and this is what I wanted to lead into before we even got into the game. How do you feel about this uh, interpretation of the uh, 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 rural fellow? You know, everyone's double secret, oversensitive about everything. So, is there a is there a uh, uh, is there a shout out for the poor common West Virginia hillbilly who would find this characterization highly offensive? Well, you the know, the big barefooted doofus with the hat I, who I, walks I, around going duh and looking dumb. You know, I don't think he's that far off. I wasn't able to inspect his mouth just in case. You know, if he had the, was, the, 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 was, the you know the, the Mountain Dew teeth. Why would you but, Why would you say that? 
Uh, you live right here in West Virginia. You are a West Virginian. Oh, yeah, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with a guy that wants to don a pair of coveralls and a backwards ball cap. I've worn coveralls in my life. Um, well, they, like this kind of coveralls are sort of Elton John style well, with a, a sequin hat and you went out and started dancing. I was never able to pull off the no shirt under the coveralls trick. Mm -hmm. That's That was something that was sort of above my level. But uh, I've worn a baseball cap backwards, and uh, I, you know he's got a, an envious amount of hair. I will say that it's, and it's lovely blonde hair. But I mean, we are in a we are. It's funny this game. We are very in a very uh, fortunate position because we're probably the only people on earth that can stand in judgment of this character. Yeah, we I mean we couldn't stand in judgment of most of the others. But this honestly, guy, there were people that I went to school with that that wore overalls with no shirt to it, school. Two. To school. To bull. No. That's not true. They wouldn't let him in school with no shirt on. Maybe they did have a shirt on. In did my they mind, wear they were shoes, Bo? They wore shoes. They wore shoes. Now, there's a there's a broad generalization of hill folk that they don't have shoes. You know? That, that, yeah. Now, we, we know some poor folk. Mm -hmm. And I've been poor many times. I'm not loaded now. But I've always had something to put on my feet. You can get out of Goodwill for $2 bill, get you a pair of shoes, get yeah. you boat. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, this is this is the characterization, and, and if you find well, it what makes you think? It. What makes you think that they are uh, kind of you know satirizing the Hillfolk just because his name is Bubba? What if his name was James? Look Would the at game him, be Bo. different? He's an overall wearing hillbilly. What do you think the ultimate hillbilly name is? Bubba. Do you think so? Absolutely. Find a more hillbilly name than Bubba. What about Wade? No, Wade Wilson was a was not a hillbilly. He was a great. Very, uh, quarterback. What about Dwayne? That's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Dwayne? Not a hillbilly. How do you figure that is a Cletus is a hillbilly name? Also. Right? But not Dwayne. Dwayne? Are you kidding me? What about a double name like Bobby Joe? That's, you're, now you're cooking. Mm. Now you got it. If it was like uh, B B Billy Sue or Connie Mae, something like that, that's a hillbilly. Connie Mack. Con no, not Connie. No. Mm. That's a full name. Mm. You know who Connie Mack is? He was a manager, wasn't he? <laughs> I, I think, think it was, he I think was. he managed the A's back owner, in the forties. Yeah, I think he was an owner. So anyway, with all that aside, so I, I, I just want to I want to throw something out there for for all the Hill folk. Let's all none of them. <laughs> We've got to be the only one. Our, our our listenership in West Virginia is huge. Willie's another one. That one you can get away with. That's sort of the catch-all goofy name. Now, I know there are hillbillies throughout the country, and perhaps there are hillbillies throughout the throughout world. Throughout the world. But they don't call them hillbillies no. anywhere else, do they? Because sometimes they live in deserts, and that wouldn't make sense. They got hillbillies in deserts? They're everywhere. What do they wear out there? Coveralls. <laughs> I doubt that. You're you're just making stuff up now. So, Bubba and Sticks. Un. It's another one of those. Yeah, one of those. But they did do the parentheses right. Yeah, they did get it right. So, came out in 94. This, uh, from the... Uh, from the good, uh, uh, talented folks over at Core. Yeah, the, these guys are some major league players. Yeah, you know, of course, uh, probably most well known for the Tomb Raider mm -hmm. series. They did a, they did a ton of stuff, a lot of stuff on the Amiga. Now, uh, one player. Now you've got your choice on this one, Boatster. And I looked at both versions. Now you've got your uh, your ECS OCS version, and then you've got your uh, CD32 version. Now, uh, I will say. Having watched, uh, I played both, and I watched the, uh, and I went to, the uh, version of this I've got for C32 has no music, so I went to watch someone play, so I'd hear what the music sounded like. Uh, I could see only two differences between the two versions of this, all right? One, the CD32 version had a wacky animated entry, entry you know, like a little movie, startup right. movie. Secondly, the, uh, uh, the CD32 version had the old Red Book audio. And you would have that and the effects, whereas the uh, the Amiga version had the classic baloney, where you could get effects one or the music. other. I yeah. hate that. It is the worst. And the thing is that we've seen like a good example. We've just a million of them. Lionheart, among others. They've got you can have both. You Two words: lazy programming. Well, I mean, maybe it's a technique that came along later, but no, this game came out in ninety four. Yeah, I know. So maybe, this is this is the last of the Red Hot a, Home if there's, a, uh, if there's a fellow out there that watches the show or listens to it that is a developer that can explain to us why this would have happened in 94. That the only thing I can think of is maybe disk space. Maybe they couldn't get it all in the cache. You know. I'm not buying RAM. it. Ram. All right. But I mean, really, what do you think it was? Honestly, boil it down. Lazy, Lazy programming. Yeah. That's right. I think too. And this is core. Uh, now, uh, this was developed... 
Uh, also for the uh, Genesis slash Mega Drive. I bet they had sound effects and music at the same time. I bet time. they did. And one would wonder if the same amount of care went into the Amiga version that went into the uh, Mega Drive version. One would think probably not, but you yes. never know. Especially in 94. <laughs> the uh, writing was on the wall, as This was coded by Simon uh, Phipps and uh, Mark Watson, and the graphics were done by... Uh, Phipps and Billy Allison. Mm. Uh, they did the majority of the, the line share the work that with those with those fellas right there. So there's really a two man team. Well, I mean, yeah, more or less. Uh, it says here, according to the notes I found, uh, Mark Watson was the pr- programmer of the Amiga and CD32 versions, and Phipps was responsible for backgrounds, game designs, and some coding. And Allison did character design, animation, some of the background design, and the comic book that came with it in the manual. And drew the box art. So there you go. Box uh, art, I, pretty good. Now they had a different fellow do the Genesis version, which is a fellow named John Kirkland. Uh, so, so it, uh, you know, I didn't look at the Genesis version. Have you looked to see is it the same game or is it I totally different? I didn't even different? look at the Genesis version, to be honest with you. So I don't, I don't Missed know. Missed opportunity for me. Now, I should have done that. Now I will say, anyway, getting back to what I was saying, the only difference I saw between the two versions were the entrance and the, and the sound. Now, uh, a lot of people don't like the CD sound versus the cool little tune you get on the Amiga mm-hmm. with that CD. I will say I really like the music in this game. I like I actually liked both. Uh, I thought the CD uh, Red Book Audio fit nicely. It's kind of mysterious almost in a weird way. It's not wacky at all, uh, uh, which it, I thought was an interesting choice, but it works. What do you mean by mysterious? Did it sound like the X-Files theme? It was sort of like space music, mm. kind of, but it was like like a space music to like, uh, you know the kind of music they think of space music that you would have with Tetris. Like thinking man's space music, like like a kind of a driving backbeat overlaid with some like spacey music. You're a dance trash. No, it's no, it's not that at all. Seriously, it's really it's more like uh, something you listen to when you're doing your homework. Okay, right? that's okay. right. Okay, so the, so the, there you go. So the uh, the overall, I thought the music was. Uh, pretty good on both, but I mean, I can see where you would like the Amiga version because clearly I, it's the, I do. The, I mean, the thing that I like, OCS, ECS. I, I like any Amiga music that or, uh, that utilizes the organ. Uh, the Fury of the Furries is another example. There's a really good. The Amiga does the Hammond kind of B2 organ sound very well, and uh, this, this this sort of had a groovy groovy uh, uh, tune that I could play, and it, it made me not as frustrated when I, I couldn't make any progress past the second level. Now, which one did you play primarily? You oh, I, I, only, I only played the ECS. So OCS. let me explain, because so, you probably don't know this. In the uh, CD32 version, you get this wacky video that explains what's going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's what's going on. There's this alien, and his boss yells at him because he forgot to pick up an Earthling. Mm. Right? This guy's going around. I guess he's collecting guys for like their galactic zoo. Okay. So I saw an episode of uh, something about this. There's a ton I think of it was the about, horrible. There's everything about that. So... This, and of course, it's all wacky. So the guy be, comes down to Earth, and Bubba is driving along in his truck. All right, he's got like a a business truck of some sort. Probably he's, like he's, a he's bebopping around like an S10. And this guy, his UFO zooms over, the gimmicks open, they beam Bubba up. Okay, so Bubba's in there with all these aliens, and there's a big handle, and Bubba pulls the handle as the UFO's driving, and the the uh, I don't know why they would put this in the docking bay. Apparently, the same guys that designed this ship were the ones that designed that ship at the Phantom Menace, where they put the uh, field generators in the landing bay. <laughs> you know, but this big handle. So he pulls the handle, and the door opens, and all the aliens get dumped out. Ooh. And that's where you begin. And okay. Th- at the last second. Bubba, as he comically falls, grabs sticks and they and then they plumb. I'm dirt. sure that if you read the comic book that was included with this, it would have explained it. If you own the ECSO, probably version. so. That's yeah. probably why it was in there. So, then and then then you begin. So uh, you begin on uh, like this, like a planet surface, and you're running around. Now this is a, it's a surreal game uh, in a lot of ways. There's uh, everything's alive. It seems like this little bu- you know, on the first level, for example, there's little like moving like bushes. They're kind of like the trees from the Wizard of Oz. There are trees that follow you around. Mm-hmm. There's a uh, little squeaky little dudes that, that fly out of the trees and 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 whatnot. And and you are Bubba the Hick, and your only offense or a means of transportation sometimes is is sticks. Sticks is a stick, a True. sentient stick yes. with hair. Uh, who uh, uh, Bubba just holds onto and walks around with and beats stuff with and uses to jump on top of and everything else. Anything you could think of to do with a stick, you could probably much do it in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you run through these levels uh, with and that and you use these the stick to solve puzzles effectively. 
if you're looking for a game that is Sonic-like, for example, or even Mario-like, this ain't it. No. Um, how would you... Why don't you speak on what this is and what you would compare it to? This is the, the last of the Red Hot Puzzle platformers. Um, this is a, you know, a late release, very graphically impressive. This is uh, yeah. far past the time when you, know, you were getting a lot of these later quality Amiga titles that were simultaneously race, or released for the consoles. Um, this is a game that has a lot in common with the Lost Vikings. Yes, that's the first thing I thought of. I mean, and, and, and by that, I mean, because you're one guy, but the puzzly stuff yeah, aspects yeah. of it. This, yeah. is, this, is, this is a very cerebral exercise that does rely on a lot of, um, of uh, being able to coordinate your movements with a control pad as well. You know, puzzle platformer might be my least favorite genre. Um, you know all the genres. Yeah, because even like what more than like uh, uh, I mean like everything real time strategy driving. Because I, I feel like you know with a platformer it's all reflexes. You know it's all you know it's all coordination with the controller. Whereas with with puzzles, you know puzzle games you're using your mind. When you have to rely on both of those things to work well together, I just never have a good time because I know that there's going to be a point where I just reach and I just can't continue because it's 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 beyond me. Um, <laughs> and that, that was quite early. It was quite early game. in this game. Um, so this game is very reminiscent of a NES game called A Boy and His Blob. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, really. where you can uh, you can you've got a, a blob that can morph into various objects that you can use to get around the world. The stick is much more. Um, you know, there's not as much the stick can do. The stick retains its shape. However, the stick does have some personality. You know, he's got a little smile. He's got a little wisecracking angle to him. Um, I will say, in this game's favor, I much prefer this game to any other game where it's blank and blank. This is one oh, of right, the better... Rough and, rough, and, rough and Tumble was way better. Well, than that doesn't have two people in it. No one knows why they called Rough and Tumble. They should have called it the best game that you'll ever play on the Amiga. No, it does that game have rocks. two people. Who? Rough Who's and Tumble? tumble. It's the other guy. There's no other guy. The you're player you're guy. totally making that up. Um, this is much better. Like I enjoyed this a lot more than Head Over Heels on the Spectrum. Uh, definitely better than Quick and Silva. Of course, that was a magazine cover disc game. Yeah, um, you're really grasping. But there. I mean, th this is this is not a bad game except for one thing. And the one thing is that they make just like so many other Amiga games, the difficulty curve spikes. Uh, at least in this game, you can get past the first level and you feel like you're doing well. When you get to the second level, the game, it, it hockey sticks, to use a, uh, you know, one of those business terms, where you, it just immediately gets impossible. I played this game, you know, we played for about an hour on the stream, and uh, you know, I, was, I was trying to do everything I could to, to get past the second level, and I just couldn't do it. They went from a relatively simple to understand side-scrolling premise on the first level to this multi-level to where not only do you have to worry about solving individual puzzles, but you also have to deal with dealing with a multi-level um, structure. You're in this space station or something. It's not in like Lionheart where you just don't know where to go half the time, and that's that's that shouldn't be part of the part of the part Lionheart's of the problem. Lionheart's not like that at all. Lionheart's exactly it's like that. It's nothing like that. You're on a multi-stage, multi-level thing where you're just ballyhooing around. You don't know what you're doing. It's nothing like that at all. You're an idiot. Lionheart so, sucks. But that much said, even though you're stupid and wrong about that. So. The, he's right about one thing. You get to the second level of this, and it's a whole different... A whole, on the first level, there were plenty of parts where, much like Bubba, I turned to the screen and went... Huh? Mm -hmm. like, I was like He does have a good idle animation. I yeah, forgot about that. That's, well, that's that was good. my yeah. idle animation, too, as I tried to struggle <laughs> in vain to, to, in a vain attempt to understand. Uh, uh, You'll get to points where... You, it, the th one thing about this game... In some ways, it reminds me of like a text adventure. And, 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 and by that, I mean you have to... It's really? total trial and error. Yeah, you have to think outside the box a lot mm -hmm. of ways. I mean, way outside the box. I mean, uh, there are plenty of examples of this. Uh, the, uh, they're, on the very first level, you come across these two guys that are having a conversation, mm -hmm. and, they're, and on the other side of them is a ledge, okay? And you got no way to get up this ledge. It's impossible. You can't climb up it. These are little alien blob and guys. And so eventually what you figure out, I couldn't figure this out. I had, it's funny. I had to go and look it up was that if you stand back far enough to where only one of the two guys is on the screen, then you can hit one of the guys with a stick and he'll grab it and hold it up and you can jump on it. Well, how the hell are you just to figure that out? You know, it's really bizarre. Right. However, however, the way that the first level is structured, 
you know that this is this you've got to do something with these two guys that's to move right. on because it's a left to right sort that's, of deal that's right now it, but in the, when you get to the second level it, as boat mentioned it's a multi-level elevator that goes up and down and you know you have to solve effectively five four puzzles to get to these doors the doors are coated with these like puzzly they're kind of very uh, amiga inspired almost like red and white checkerboard almost look like dice yeah and, and you have to figure out how to go get these uh activate these doors to open them well there are like four or five or six levels of this and it is unbelievable and the thing is uh, uh that's nowhere near that's not even on the same realm as the harder levels uh, but it's difficult and much like boat it's funny i went and i struggled and i struggled and struggled and struggled and played this and i was like let's go check out how boat did because he went for an hour and x amount of minutes and i'd been sitting there for an hour trying to figure out what was going on and boat got it was the exact same spot and i had to look up facts and everything else to try to figure out how to get past this thing and, and it was really tough yeah you know now i will say that i think the puzzles are mostly fair yeah the ones i saw now did you try going to the extra like levels with the level code? Oh no! This is one of those games that has uh, the you type in the twenty digit number, right? <laughs> which, by the way, you can't use the keyboard. So again, this is your classic port. You're freaking Amiga, yeah, nonsense. It's not the Amiga. It is the it's Amiga. The Amiga. Keyboard. The Amiga is the only computer that does this. The freaking Spectrum has you let you type in the thing well, and not with the, the joystick. The Spectrum wasn't sending its stuff over to the freaking Genesis. The That's Spectrum the came out in 1982. But I'm just saying, hey, listen, it's not the Amiga's fault if these guys don't support a keyboard. Yeah, well, it's not their it's fault. It's not the Amiga's problem. But, uh, you know, but, so, but I mean, they, it's one of those games where you well, have to use the joystick to they, go up and I'm down I'm sure the that they had the CD32 in mind as they were making the ECSO. They possibly version. did. So nevertheless, you put in a thousand digit code and you can skip levels. Uh, we should talk about some of these levels. So you've got your your come to Earth or come to the grand alien come world. Come to Jesus right? moment. No, you got the alien world level. Then you've got that uh, spaceship level, which we got to. Amongst the other levels you've got are an underwater level, which look I played it. It was nightmarish. <laughs> underwater this, levels never great. You've got this lava level, like a fire level, which I'll talk about more about that in a minute. And you've got this sort of uh, this level where you're transferred across the level via these like pipes okay and another uh, the, i watched someone play through this and it was unbelievable like i don't know how a human could have figured this out i just sat there like i mean you had to take copious notes to remember what was going on and i'm sure that's what people did back in the day you know this might have been your only game to play for the month or for the year no you you got and plenty of play out of it yeah you know? uh, it's it but, but the, the problem is this isn't like this isn't like Contra or something where you're like shooting and bashing. And again, this is this is my problem with the puzzle platformer genre is that you're you know not only are you expected to solve these puzzles, but you have to do very specific things. You have to be coordinated with the pad or the stick as well. Yeah. And this is not an infinite lives. You know, do yeah. it till you. I mean, you've got three lives and then it's game over, baby, game over. Now, I'm glad that they do have the codes, but you can get pretty far in a level and still you know those codes only send you back to the beginning of the level. I'll tell you something else about the codes. And then, and because I was, I played both versions, but I, uh, the the codes on um, Lemon and on uh, Hall of Light, like the first code worked, but the rest of them didn't work. And I looked, and heck, the third level code is missing a digit. I'm like, these can't be right. So I looked around, and I went to like I think it was Game Fact, but I had an Amiga version of the, and, and it had the correct codes. So for anyone out there, you your mileage may vary on using these access codes. Because like I said, one of them. I knew it wasn't going to work. It was a digit short, and there's no space. It just was the wrong code, so <laughs> that caused me some trouble trying to just to hop around. I couldn't find a uh, like a, a trainer version. I love to have had a version where you just didn't get hurt. Yeah, it was really this game would be infinitely. You know, I don't have. I guess I should say. You know, the I'm playing this game right now called Ori in the Blind Forest. Mm. Okay, this is a modern game just released within the past couple of years, and yeah. it's also a puzzle platformer. There's some puzzles you've got to solve to get through various things, and they figure it out that what you need to have is, you know, lots of checkpoints, you know, or save states or whatever in infinite lives. Because yeah. then you can feel free to experiment with different things and not have the specter of the game over screen hovering over your head. Now, of course, this is a new game. They hadn't quite figured that out, but it would have been great. This game could have been great. I mean, I don't think, like you said, the puzzles are not unfairly hard. They do, the, the, the solutions make sense. What they should have done was just erased the life thing and just kept bringing you back to the same place, you know, the same checkpoints. Oh, that's something else. When you die, it often takes you way back. Yeah. I, and that is so demoralizing. I made liberal use of the save states. Well, in I this did game, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, 
I'm very conflicted on this game because, uh, first of all, I don't think the uh, the animation and stuff is brilliant. It's a it's actually a funny game. Yeah, the animation is probably some of the best that yeah, I've it's, seen it's on the platform. It's very attractive. It's That's really I, really good. I, I, once again, I don't I don't like the lead character, but he looks good. Yeah, I uh, mean he's better than freaking Kid Chaos. That's true. Yeah. But and and the thing is, as hard as this game was for me, it's fair. I will say that. But. I mean, in early levels. It gets ridiculous later on. Let me ask you a question, because you've read the docs. What are those little, like, alien personified I, I, blobs? I don't know. You don't know. Aliens. Okay. Um, the uh, the problem I've got is, like, I, is this game brilliant? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. The puzzles and the uh, aspects of this game that I saw were unbelievable. The amount of things you can do with that stick are unbelievably clever. Uh, I read... Uh, I read some uh, trivia on this game, and that and the, the whole base of this game was that stick. Yeah, the stick is brilliant. It's uh, a brilliant the, uh, move. According to the uh, one of the designers, um, yes, it was F uh, Phipps, uh, Jeremy Heath Smith, was one of the big guys at Rick Core. Oh, man, he what liked a name. The, he liked the stick and Rick Dangerous so much. He asked Core Design to make a game around the stick. That that so the whole game was designed with this play you know thing in mind that's crazy and then the funny thing is this the game wasn't originally uh, a hillbilly game it was this it was originally a going to be a moody dark atmospheric game mm. uh, where you have a stick and and they <laughs> and they couldn't make it work and so some of the guys went home and they sat around and they came up with every conceivable thing you could do with a stick. Mm -hmm. And then they wrote a game around all I will say stuff. that I much prefer having Hillbilly Bubba instead of some gritty, dark, atmospheric, like the freaking guy from um, um, Degeneration. That guy was just the worst. Uh, well, I like Degeneration. I like the gritty. So I think this game, game could have easily been a gritty game if it wanted it to be. And if they take it a little more seriously. Not Degeneration. I'm, I'm saying the wrong game. What's the name of the one where you see his profile the whole time, the top-down adventure game? You got me. I don't know which one you're thinking All about. Right. Um, so, uh, if, by the way, Bubba was not uh, always going to be a hick. At first, get this, he was a long-necked green alien. Mm -hmm. Then they scrapped that. Mm -hmm. Then he was a gangly. This is a quote from the from the guy that made him. He was a gangly inhabitant of Lancashire in a flat cap and string vest named Elvis. Oh, that would have been bad. It would have been like Yojo. <laughs> so, <laughs> by the way, the bad guy you're, that kidnapped him is called Waldo. Apparently, I'll tell you what they should have done. They should have made this guy a laid back, cool Californian surfer dude. Oh yeah, that's not. I would have been behind that around. And then at the end had a, a, a scene, an uncomfortable <laughs> scene with his girlfriend. <laughs> Something I wanted to mention, since you hilariously mentioned this earlier, is that uh, when this game came out, uh, it had a tie-in. The Genesis version had a tie-in with bubble gum. Oh, I was on it. Yeah, and so I believe it was Hubba Bubba mm -hmm. uh, was the uh, was the uh, tie. Oh yeah, no, take that back. It was Bubblicious. Mm. So the Genesis version, and by the way, the Genesis version this was released by Tengen. The Atari yeah. uh, uh, subset or right. secondary or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, so it actually had a tie-in with gum. Well, let me ask you this. Are you a big gum guy? No, nah, not really. Me neither. I hate gum. Yeah, I mean, Chewing gum is really gross. Chewing gum I hate the most. Oh, man. That's a quote from Willy but Wonka. Anyway, getting getting back to the my thoughts of this game, the, the, the I think it's a brilliant game. It's, it's almost too brilliant, actually. I mean, it's super. You have to really have on your thinking, Tuke. But there are parts of it. If you go back, in, there's a, there's one part in particular I saw. There's a there's a bit in the lava level where Bubba has to shimmy across a, a, like a tightrope, and to get to the other side of this ledge, and it's really tough. And you use the you use the stick like a tightrope walker would use a, a stick. What? Yeah. And so uh, when you get to the other side, there's a hole that blows smoke up in the air. Okay. And there's a ledge above it. You can work your way all the way across this thing, but if you didn't, at the very beginning of that area, if you didn't kick a rock across that tightrope to get to the side, then you can't continue. Oh my gosh. Because the rock has to go over the hole to shoot you up in the air. Oh. It's puzzles like that. I yeah, mean, that's a, really unfair. You're going that's... into a, 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 a almost like a Dragon's lair -y zone here. Oh, it's more like a Sierra game zone where I if, mean, you, you, know, if maybe, you don't do it right the first time, then you're screwed. Maybe Swainy's, uh, if can comment, also plays in this game. If you memorize, I mean, you almost have to memorize yeah. this level. And again, with infinite lives, that wouldn't be an issue. But with, a, with your limited lives that yeah that's a problem yeah so 
That's so again. I mean, I think it's too hard. Uh, in fact, right there, he's if you're watching the video, he's shimmying right now with the stick. Uh, so yeah, there you go. So anyway, uh, this game reviewed uh, probably more uh, higher than what we would give it. Uh, the people in Lemon give the ECS versus an 8.01, and the CD32 version 8.25. Again, they're effectively the same game, mm -hmm. just with the sounds a little bit different in the video. Um, Amiga Action gave us an 87. Amiga Computer gave it an 85. Amiga Format gave it an 85. Amiga it, you know, we talk about this often. In 94, what wasn't getting at least a B? Right. Well, I mean, know, I think this Amiga is... Magazines. Uh, Amiga, they were like, please give us material to Amiga review. Amiga Mag gave it 10 out of 10, and Amiga Power gave it an 84, then upgraded to an 85 a year later. And then Australia CU Amiga gave it a 90, and the 1 gave it a 91. So you're looking at scores there that are in the B to low A range. Now, um, if I was going to judge this game on the visuals alone, it would be an A++. It's a, it's a, it's a very attractive game. Yeah. I, mean, it, it, I mean, let me rephrase that. It's a, the car, it's a very well-done game. It uses multi-layers. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it is funny. It is Bubba is well animated. Mm -hmm. You know his antics are amusing. Uh, I don't. Also, the concept that you've got the whole concept of this game. I think they could have come with a better gimmick that would have made it more. Fun. You don't they like the stick? Man, no, I love the stick. No, the stick's fine, but I wouldn't have had it be a sentient stick. Did you watch a lot of Nicktoons back in the nineties? I 90s? hated the Nickelodeon. All right. Well, they used to have this guy that used to host the summer segments called Stick Stickly. Uh -huh. He was a tongue depressor. Yeah, that sounds. He dumb. was awesome. That sounds dumb. Uh, but uh, overall. You know, I, it's not one I'm going to go back to just because it made me mad a lot. I, it was a very frustrating week trying to play this game. I had, a, I mean, it just, there was no flow to it. There was never a part of this where you were at least say, okay, I can get past this by using my agility. Mm -hmm. you, that was your, because you, you couldn't. Yeah. But yeah. Still, it was, it's clever. We did get some Discord reviews on this. Right. Um, Graham Vebke says, a puzzle platforming game with nice graphics and genre typical sounds. Where you play as really a dork, you can't do anything without sticks, the Swiss Army stick. Sticks attacks in yo-yo style is used to climb to keep balance, even the push and lift things, which is an interesting concept, but has too many cheap deaths. I couldn't figure out the pink piped section and I just came, gave up after failing too many times in stage two. Six out of ten. That's where we that's where we sputtered out too. Absolutely. Chris Fold says another subpar puzzle platform game. Nicely drawn graphics, average run of the mill sound effects. CD32 version has music. This game is cheap death central and another near vertical difficulty curve. Why don't they ease us in gently? Six out of ten. Pixels at Dawn says easily one of the best animated platformers on the Amiga by some margin, with a cracking soundtrack and a quirky sense of humor in the vein of Earthworm Jim, which it predates by six months. I actually thought that was a right on comparison. This thing does kind of scream Earthworm Jim to me. In terms of the look, not in terms right, of the play. Right, right. Yeah. The conceit of the game works well, and the first level is a good tutorial on how to play, but the second level on ECS, it's different on the CD32, is vastly more difficult and mm. stops you dead in your tracks. Yes. Much potential, sadly wasted. 6.5 out of 10. Maybe you ought to try the CD32 version on your CD32. Well, the funny thing is, this, this, I did play the CD32 version, but I, when, I got, when I loaded it up, I just went straight for the code. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually try to play mm -hmm. the code. And finally, Duncan Styles says, I agree with the previous reviews. I seem to remember buying this game based on a first level demo, and what a great first level. Agreed. From level two, the game is frustratingly unique, but still gorgeous and loaded with character. Clearly, a lot of thought has gone into it. Packed full of nice touches and quality animation. It may not be fast, but this is a console quality platformer. Six out of ten. I will say that. I mean, this this is one of those few Amiga titles that that I mean, it looks as good as a console platformer. It plays just as well. It's a puzzle platformer. That's what it is. You know, I was just thinking as we were sitting here that the game that just reminds me of the most, and it's not the gameplay per se, but it's it's the frustration level and the fact that I really wanted to like it. Mm -hmm. Sleepwalker. Yeah, it's yeah, very a similar. Beautiful game. It, like, the premise was cool, mm -hmm. you know, and it was cartoony and fun, but it was just freaking uh, mega difficult. Yeah. Now I'm looking over here at Amiga Box says he beat this game and he didn't think it was that hard, so maybe we're just dumb. Well, that goes without yeah. saying. Um, we are hillbillies after all. That's true. That's true. Um, you know, it would be it would be interesting to know how well this game was reviewed on the Genesis because you know this game got A's across the board, B's across the board on all the Amiga publications. But with the Genesis, there were so many so many platformers coming out in ninety three, ninety four. I wonder how this stuck out. Um, so maybe I'll look into that and report back. Well, uh, I'm going to put it this way: Did you know it was on the Genesis and he did review? Oh, jeez, no. Enough said. Yeah. All right. Well, Aaron, last week. 
our supporter song winners, last week's song, YMCA by the Village People. That was pretty easy one there, but You know, it's funny. I always I was confused by the words of YMCA as a young child because Why it says that? like you get yourself clean, you can have a good meal, you can do whatever you feel. Uh huh. That confused you, did it? Well, it confused a lot of people actually. I uh, I you know I, I understood the part about uh, get yourself clean because there are showers. Yeah. I was never you know I was never I was a member of the Y when I was a kid. Never had a good meal over there. And I guess the YMCA, you could live at the YMCA. There were like apartments and stuff back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't understand that at all back in the day. Uh, as I recall, I could be wrong here, but this song was actually, uh, of course, the Village People uh, did this tune. Big, big band in the, in the 70s. And as I recall, uh, the YMCA organization took this up as their as their commercial theme song for a while and then they abruptly ended that campaign when someone told them what the village people were talking about they so, were talking about getting it on they were talking the about hooking up at the y yeah and uh, that you know, probably the same reason you didn't hear in the navy use real <laughs> <laughs> you know so but the village people i like them i was always a big fan of theirs they were flamboyant crazy guys they were you couldn't help but laugh that's why you're a big fan stage. of me you're you're crazy. I'll give you that. <laughs> so, um, if you do want to, if you like the show, if you want to support the show, if you want, uh, you can you can stop by our page at everythingamiga.com/support. You can support us on Patreon. You can support us on uh, PayPal. Send us some Prozac. We take it all. Yeah. Um, I want to congratulate Pack Belly, Terry Howard, and Gary Heather for getting the YMCA song correct. You mean that's all that got it? That was all the guys. That is stunning. Not not everyone is as big a fan of the people. If you'd done the thing, YMCA, they would have got it. Instantly. That's true. Maybe I, was, I left. I was that out. fighting to do it. I was like, "Come on!" Yeah, yeah, you should have. Well, that well, would have led to more correct answers. I didn't want to ruin it for everybody. Yeah. Well, if you know the answer to this week's Patreon supporter challenge, uh, you can send me an email at john at amigospodcast dot com, and I will announce you as one of the winners. <clears throat> a big winner. Oh God! Here we go. Mind space. I need another drink. Decker, Three Point, Gary Heather, Free Lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobster, Minator, Craig McClelland, Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast, County Virtual Sheep, Bernard Quinn, Retro Man, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Edder, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Lermore, Andrew Craig, Sean Zoe, Darren Lomax, Colin 419, Bach, Bid, Roland Buck, Andrew Monk, Sure the Zombie, John Cook, Dan Ross, Leaf Kalan, Alan Kebab, Chicote Levin, Lord John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRocher, Creepy Dead Boys, Figgy CT, Slow Norris, Stefan Seguin, Mortensen, Ed and Helen, Simmons, 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Foles, Green Catcher, Lauren Jabu Graham, Baby Lane, Dan Hansen, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Ritter and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Buck and Styles, Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Dan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Ruler, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Tom. Tommy Humberstad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixel Dawn, and Kilbjorn Barman. I got no idea what you were doing there. Man, I was, well, it was a little bit of everything. I was throwing in. You like that? You could just change the song and mid song to a different song. That's when I freestyle. I go into That's that. That's what move. you were doing? Yeah. I thought you were having some sort of fit. Uh -huh. Or maybe arthritis was kicking in. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Um, next week, Aaron. Yeah. What you experience every week when you come to Amiga Studios, we're going to play Agony. <laughs> Finally, I've been waiting to get this one in for a long time. Good, great. So this is a classic, classic shooter. The I symbol. Have we never played this? Yeah, it's the stunning. symbol of Psygnosis. Yeah, it'll be a fun one. To take a look at. I haven't really, I haven't really gone deep with this one, so we'll see. We'll see if I can progress past the first level, which is always a. Uh, Something I struggle with. You on gotta pass the first level in this one. Yeah, it's the shooter genre. You Sometimes. know what pissed me off about this was I spent a significant amount of time in this game. I still couldn't get past the second level. Well, Annoying. That's how it goes. All right, guys. Uh, until next week, I want to thank all of our chat. We had a very active chat this week. Uh, Pixels at Dawn, Samwise is here, Donald Tyler, 
Lobsterminator, Atari Vision, welcome, welcome, Amiga, Amiga Bong, I'm gonna say yo. Uh, we got Jan Holbo Rasmussen, Duncan yeah. Styles. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, we record Amigos most weeks, Fridays at 5.30. This week we're recording a little early, but we'll be back next week at our normal time. Uh, feel free to check us out, subscribe to our channel, Amigos Retro Gaming, and we will see you next week. Until then, adios. adios.